Just in this video, we're going to talk about pulleys. A little late there. Guys, um, so have your chapter four guided notes out and ready to go as we go through these slides. Again, in this chapter, our, our whole aim of this chapter is to apply Newton's laws of motion. We learned that Newton's first, second, and third law last chapter. So let's apply them to a pulley system. And that's what we're going to start to do, starting with this video. So you're supposed to write down what a pulley is. Here's what a pulley is. A pulley is a device that changes the direction of tension. So it's a, it's a device that changes the direction of tension. Usually you're pulling with some rope, and this pulley here is like a, a wheel that kind of changes the direction of that tension. Now why would we want to do that? Well, if you imagine lifting this big box here, just straight up, it would be quite difficult because we're, you know, it's kind of awkward to pull it straight up. Well, a pulley can, can help you in certain situations by changing the direction of tension. So now we can pull down on the rope instead of lift up to get that box off the ground. And so there's a lot of applications for pulleys. One of them is that it changes the direction of tension. Okay, here's some free body diagrams for pulley situations that we're going to see in this chapter. I wanted to just briefly talk about the free body diagrams now. Okay, real quickly, what do we call, now, this is a block, a, a mass that's on a table. So this right here is a table, and it's, this one's hanging off the edge, but it's suspended on a rope hooked to this pulley. Help me figure out what the forces are. What do we call the force that goes straight down, guys? Force of gravity. We know how to find that. We take mass times g. Well, this rope right here, what do we call the force in that rope? Tension. Tension. Okay. There's no forces going left and right here, so those are the two forces. Let's list the forces on this block. What do we call it going straight down? Force of gravity, force of gravity or weight, combined it with mg. Now, it's sitting on a table, so what do we call that force that goes up? That's the normal force. Okay. It's being pulled to the right by this string. What is that force? Tension. tension. Now, what's important to note is that this tension is the same as this tension. Once you find tension, it's the same throughout the row. And then there's the force that's opposing the motion. What do we call that force here? Force of friction. So we're going to get used to filling in free body diagrams with pulleys, and that's kind of a good example of what you would do. Okay, one of the cool things about pulley systems is that they can provide a mechanical advantage. And by using more than one pulley, the force needed to lift an object can be reduced. So it creates a mechanical advantage, which means it makes it easier to lift things. A pulley is a simple machine. Let's look at this situation here on the left here, this diagram. We've got this guy, and he's trying to lift this piano. And he's rigged up a pulley system. Well, it says the mechanical advantage of, of this system that he's rigged up, the mechanical advantage is 2. What does that mean if the mechanical advantage of this pulley system is 2? Not exactly. A good guess. It makes it how much easier to lift? two times as easy to lift this thing rather than just lifting it you know, with his hands straight up. So using these pulleys, it makes it um, only half the force or twice as easy to lift it. And that's because now you've got how many tensions here? Two. So it cut the force in half, which makes the mechanical advantage of two. Okay, we're going to study uh, and introduce pulleys with this machine here. It's called an Atwood machine. You're supposed to write something in your notes right here. An Atwood machine allows one object to hoist another object using only gravity. <clears throat> so if this was a block like, say, a, a car engine in your garage, how could you lift that out of the out of the truck or a car? 
Well, you could use a counter block, a counterweight. And now if you just put a little bit of force on one of these blocks, it's going to lift the other one. Right? And that's what an Atwood machine does. We're going to study them. So this question, would the masses in the Atwood machine move if they were both 100 kgs? Is this system going to move? Nope. There's, there's a, is there a net force? Or are they balanced? They're balanced. So yeah, according to Newton's first law, that thing's not going to move. It's going to stay at rest. And tell what happens. And tell there's a net force. So if I push down on this one, what's going to happen to this one? It's going to move up. And so that's what a net wooden machine does. And it gives it to lift heavy objects. Okay, I've got an example problem here. These problems get a little bit complex. So if, uh, let me warn you right now to pay attention and to write down everything that I write down. You're going to write it down on your guided notes. So please be following along there. Okay, steps to solving an Atwood machine problem. I'm going to list all the steps here. We're going to go through it slowly on this example problem because I've got two ex uh, practice problems that will follow this that you're going to have to do. Okay, so number one, ask yourself, will the masses move here? If this mass on the left is 200 kgs and this one's 100, is it going to move? Yes. Yeah. It's going to move. There's an unbalanced force there. There's a net force that's going to move. Number two, which direction is it going to move? Down on which side? Down on the left side. So, we're going to put in an arrow that shows the direction that it's going to move. This could be the most important part of these problems. Isn't this going to move up on the right and down on the left? Okay, so I'm going to draw that arrow and I'm going to put acceleration is positive in this direction. Okay. Now what makes this problem a little bit complicated is the sign notation it has to be correct. So if we're saying it's moving up on the right and down on the left and that acceleration is positive in that direction, well, as it goes up on the right, that's going to be in the positive direction. But as it moves down on the left, that's going to be in the positive direction as well. Now it's a little bit different because we've always said that down in physics is negative. But remember, this rope is connected to both blocks. So we've got to keep the same sign notation. So up on the right is positive, but down on the left side is positive. That means up over here is negative, and down on the right side is negative. So please write that in your notes, okay? That's the most important part of this problem. Okay, number three, label which direction is positive and which is negative. We did that. Okay, we've got that done. Number four, it says create two, equal, uh, two equations, one for each mass, where force net equals ma. What we're trying to solve for here is the acceleration of the blocks, and we're so trying to solve for tension in the rope, or the string, whatever it is. Okay. So this is where it gets a little bit complicated. We're going to create two equations, one for each mass, where the net force is equal to ma. So let's use Newton's second law, force net is equal to MA. Let's write that down. Now we're going to create two equations. So I'm going to put one right here. And we're going to use it for one mass. Okay. Um, first of all, before we do that, let's fill in the free body diagram with as much information as we can. Can we figure out what the force of gravity is on this right block? Yeah, yeah force of gravity is equal to MG. So we take the mass, which is 100, and times it by 9.8. And Cole, you got 980? Yeah. So that's 980 newtons of force coming down. Do I know what the force of tension is going up? Yeah, it's got to be less, but we don't know what it is, right? So I'm going to put a question mark here for right now. Now let's do the same thing on the right side. 
force of gravity or weight is equal to mg. The mass is 200 times 9.8. What is it again? 1960. 1960 newtons. Okay. And do we know the force of tension going up? We don't know. It's got to be less than 1960, but we don't know what it is. Okay. So again, we're trying to solve for acceleration of the blocks and the tension in the rope. To do that, we're going to create two equations here. On the first equation, we're going to use the free body diagram. I don't care which side you choose to start with, but let's, in this case, choose the right one. It doesn't matter. Force net. Is there going to be a net force left and right on this block, guys? Yeah. Left and right? No, it's going to move up and down. So um, let's go to our sign notation. Up was positive. So we're going to say that tension is positive. And I'm going to put tension in right here. And then we're going to subtract off everything that's going down because that's negative. That was 980 newtons of force going down, 980. And that's going to be equal to its mass, which is 100 times the acceleration of the block, which we don't know. All right, now we've got an equation here, but how many unknowns do we have? Two. two. Can we solve one equation with two unknowns? No. no, there's no way to do that. So we're going to create a way to do it. We're going to use another equation. And for this equation, we're going to use the other side of this pulley system. <coughs> we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use Newton's second law on the other side. So in this case though, down was positive. So what's going to be positive, the 1960 or the tension? 1960. 1960. And we're going to subtract off tension because it was going up and on the left side we said that that was negative. So minus tension is equal to the mass of it is 200. We're timesing that by A, which we don't know. Okay, now hopefully you see how we're going to solve this, but if we have two unknowns, we've got to create two equations and add them together. All we're going to do is add one and two together and see what happens. What do we get if we have a positive tension and we subtract tension? Doesn't it cancel out? Okay, so I'm going to cancel those out, and, and that's what should happen every time. Your, ten your tension should cancel each other. If it doesn't, you did something wrong with your signs. Okay, what's 1960 minus 980? Well, that's 980. Okay, now be careful here. What's 100A times, or 100A plus 200A? 300A. That's 300A. They're like terms, so we just add them together. Don't times them. Now it's simple. How do we solve for acceleration there? Divide by 300, both sides. Can somebody do that for me? What's 980 divided by 300? 3.2. 3.2 3.20. Meters per second squared. Okay, so acceleration is equal to 3.2 meters per second squared. Okay, that's one of the questions that it asks, is what's the acceleration of the blocks? Will both blocks accelerate at that? Yeah. Yeah, because they're connected with the same... Uh, row, right? So they're both going to accelerate at 3.2 meters per second squared. But now, how do we solve for tension in that row? Negative 3.2. And here's how we're going to do that. Yeah, we're going to use this acceleration and we're going to plug it back in to one of these equations. It doesn't matter which one. It will work the same both ways. You'll get the same answer. But what I always do is choose the one where tension is positive. Because then we don't have to move tension over to the other side, and it's already on the side we want. So we're going to take this 3.2 and plug it back into A in this first equation. I'm going to do that up here. So we've got tension minus 980 is equal to 100 times 3.2. Okay, see what I did? I just plugged 3.2 in for A. So tension. Minus 980 is equal to, what does that come out to be? 320. How do I get tension by itself? You add 980 
both sides. What's 980 plus 320? What is it? 1300, exactly, yeah. 1300 <coughs> newtons, okay? Now, there's our second answer. But before you just move on, we should always put this back in our free body diagram. If this is 1300 and this one is 1300, does it make sense? 1300 here and 980 down. Which way is it going to move? Up. Move up, and that's what we thought it was going to do. 1300 up and 1960 down. Which way is it going to move? Down. down. So that makes sense. Okay, that's how you solve an Atwood machine problem in physics. So hopefully that give you a little bit of an idea of how to do this. I've got a couple of practice problems that we're going to solve and work right now. So number 10, practice problem number 10, it says find the acceleration of the blocks and the tension in the string. Okay, and we're going to use those same steps. Let me help you through the first of this and then I'll let you see, uh, and then I'll let you go and see if you can solve it on your own. Okay, first of all, Let's find out which way the system is going to move or accelerate. This block is 500, this block is 1,000. Which way is it going to move? Uh, right. Yeah, it's going to, the right side is going to fall down and the left side is going to go up, right? So let's draw in that arrow. Please do this every time. And put acceleration is positive. So on the left side, when it goes up, it's positive. But on the right side, when it goes down, that's going to be positive. Okay. Sign notation is very important. Okay, now let's fill in our free body diagram. Force of gravity is equal to mg. The mass is 1,000 times 9.8. What's 1,000 times 9.8? 9,800 newtons. Okay. Yeah. We don't know what tension is coming up. I'm just going to put a capital T equals question mark. Okay, let's do the same thing for this left side. The weight is equal to mg, 500 times 9.8. 4,900. 4,900? Yeah. Thank you. Newtons. And I don't know what tension is straight up. I'm putting a question mark. Okay, now we know that if we're going to find acceleration, we need, we need to solve it with Newton's second law. Force net is equal to ma. But we've got two unknowns, so we need two equations. We're going to do an equation for the right side, and we're going to do an equation for the left side. So I'm going to pause the video, see if you guys can take it from here. You need two equations using Newton's second law, and see if you can solve for acceleration and then plug it back in for, and solve for tension. So if you're watching the video, please hit pause and see if you can take it from here. Okay, so let's see if, you've, uh, if you're on the right track here. Our first equation, it doesn't matter which block you choose, you could choose the left or the right. I'm going to choose the left one, um, just because, it doesn't matter. So we need the net force. We said that on the left side, up was positive. So I'm going to call tension is positive, And we're going to subtract off. To find the net force, I need to subtract off everything that's going down, which was 4,900 newtons. Okay, And that's equal to the mass of that object was 500 kgs. And we're timesing that by A. Okay. So there's my equation. We've got two unknowns. Can't solve it. So let's make another equation. So pick the other block. Okay, this time I'm going to do the right block. And I said that down was positive on the right. So this 9,800 newtons is positive. We're going to subtract off everything that's negative, And we said that up was negative. So tension is going to be negative in this case. And that's going to be equal to the mass, which is 1,000 kgs. and times it by A. Okay, now we've got two equations. If we add them together, if we add these two equations together, 
we should be able to cancel out one of our unknowns. And you'll notice here that tension is positive on the first equation, but negative on the second equation. So they cancel out. Okay? 9,800 subtract 4,900. Isn't that 4,900, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's equal to 500A plus 1,000A. That's going to be 1,500 times A. Okay, now to solve for acceleration, we're going to simply divide both sides by 1,500. What does it come out to be? 3.3. 3.3. So acceleration in this case is equal to 3.3, and acceleration is measuring in good meters per second squared. Okay, so both blocks are going to accelerate at 3.3 meters per second squared. Now, it also wanted us to find the tension in the string. So it, again, it doesn't matter, but we're going to take the acceleration and plug it back in to either equation number one or equation number two. I always like to pick the one where tension is positive, because tension's already on the correct side. We don't have to move it over. But uh, you know, whatever you want to do there. So I'm going to rewrite equation number one. I'm going to rewrite it up here. So tension minus 4,900 is equal to 500. And now this time we know what A is. We're going to plug in what it is, 3.3, right here. OK, so if I take 3.3 and times it by 500, I get 1650. So tension minus 4,900 is equal to 1650. So simply just add 4,900 each side. Over here it cancels out. So tension is equal to good 6,550. And its tension is a force. So what are the units going to be? Newtons. And so there we go. Now it's a good idea to kind of plug that back in over here. If this is 6,550 and this was 6,550, let's make sure that it makes sense. Down was 9,800 here and up was 6,550. It's definitely going to move down and that's what we said it was going to do. On the left side, 4,900 is down, 6,550 is up, so it's got a net force that's pointing up and so we'll move up. So a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on there, but uh, hopefully you could follow that and, and get the correct answer. I've got one more practice problem for you to try. Practice problem 11. Um, what I would like to do is have you guys start this one from the very beginning. So if you're watching the video, please hit pause, try it until you get an answer. Again, we're solving for acceleration and tension. See if you can do it, and then hit play once you've got an answer. Okay, so let's see if we got it, uh, if we got this problem right and, and if you're on the right track here. Okay, I've got the li the, a list of steps to take here on the left. And so I'm just going to go through them and see if you guys got it right. There's a block that's 25 kgs and one that's 23. You should ask yourself, which way is it going to move? Well, the heavier block is always going to move down and the lighter block is going to move up. So draw in your arrow and put acceleration is positive in this direction. So that means on the right, as it goes up, that's positive. But on the left, as it goes down, that's going to be positive. Okay, so the sign notation is very important. Please make sure you do that very first. Now, let's go through and fill out the free body diagram. Okay? On the right side, we know that the force of gravity is going to take this thing and try to pull it down, which is mg. So 23 times 9.8. And I'm getting 225.4 newtons. Okay? We know that the string, or the rope here, is, is tension, but we don't know 
what its magnitude is, so I'm going to put a question mark there. All right, that's all the forces on the block on the right. Let's go to the block on the left. We know the force of gravity or weight is going to try and pull it down, which is mass times g, so 25 times 9.8. And I'm getting that's 245 newtons. Okay. So 245. And we know that the string, or the, the, the rope here, is tension. But we don't know its magnitude, so I'm going to put a question mark. OK, that's the free body diagram. That's all the forces that, that is acting on this system here. So. Now let's try and answer the question, what's the acceleration of the, of the blocks and what is the tension in the rope? To find acceleration, we know it's Newton's second law, force net is equal to ma. But we don't know tension either, so we've got to have two equations because we have two unknowns. So let's set them up. In the first equation, it doesn't matter which block you choose. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with the left one, this left block. I'm going to set that one up first in equation number one. Okay, the force net. We said that on the left that everything down was positive. So I'm going to keep that 245 as positive. Minus everything that's negative. We said that going up was negative on the left side. So minus tension is equal to the mass of this object is 25. And the acceleration we don't know. I'm going to keep it as A. <coughs> okay, there's a one equation, but we have two unknowns. We can't yeah. solve it. So let's set up our other equation and see we if we can get it to work out. We gotta add this stuff. For the second equation, we're going to use this block in this part of the system. Right. And on the block on the right, we said that everything down was negative and everything up was positive. So tension is going to be positive here. And let's subtract off everything that's going down, which was 225.4. That's equal to the mg, the mass is 23, or ma, and, and the acceleration we don't know. Okay. So I've got two equations, two unknowns. Now we can do something. If we add them together, what you should find is that your tension should always cancel out. If they don't, you've done something wrong with your sign notation. So let's add them together now that tensions have canceled out. 245 subtract 225.4 is 19.6. And 25A plus 23A, what is that, guys? 48A. OK. Now, to solve for acceleration, we just simply divide by 48, both sides. Yep. It cancels out on the right side. And 19.6 divided by 48 will give us our answer. So acceleration good, is equal to 0 0.4. 0 0.41. Okay. And acceleration always measures in meters per second squared. Good. Thanks. Nice job, Dawson. Thanks. Okay, now Dawson, what do we do next to solve for tension? Just plug it back into the equation. Which one? Acceleration. Okay, plug it back in for acceleration on equation number one or two? Either one. Maybe. Either one, it doesn't matter, right? Which one would you pick? One. Okay. I would pick two. How come yeah. I would pick I, two? I'd pick two. Also. You would too, yeah. <laughs> How come, guys? Because tension is already positive. We don't need to move it. So I'm going to plug it into equation number two. I'm going to do it up here. So tension minus 225.4 is equal to 23. And now we know A. So let's plug it in, 0.41. Okay. So 23 times 0.41. Are you, getting, are you guys getting 9.43? Okay, so tension minus 225.4 is equal to 9.43. How do I get tension by itself? Good, add 225.4 to both sides. Over this side it cancels out, so tension is equal 
Good. 234.8 newtons. Okay. So we've got our acceleration right here, and we've got our tension right here. Now, before we finish, we should always plug this back into our free body diagram. If tension is 234.8, on the right side, is it going to move up? Yes, and because 234.8 is greater than 225.4, so it will be a net force and it will go up. On the right side, will it go down? 245 is greater than 240, uh, 234, so it will move down. Okay. Okay. So before you finish, make sure that your tension actually makes sense. Guys, these are good problems. Look how much, look how much we've used of Newton's laws of motion to solve this problem. We've used Newton's first law, the second law. This is way um, easier than freaking anything else. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of good practice with Newton's laws of motion. To give you more practice, guys, in your student workbook is a uh, worksheet called Pulley Worksheet Number One. Please go there and complete Pulley Worksheet Number One right now, and hopefully this video helped you.